What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. We got the full team in the building today. It's been a minute since we yes, all been sir. together. I dropped a quick update, but we're going to break things down a little bit higher level now that we got all the fellas here. We're going to talk about the Bears' most recent three signings. We'll also talk about the the role that, surprisingly, Phillip Rivers is having in the development of Justin Fields, which is un, un, that's unexpected as hell. We'll also talk about some other things. We'll get into more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central. See the Bobby, the Cognac Boys, what Hayes, Chicago Bears Central fam. Let's, Let's get go. it. Oh Let's man. Go. So we got we got some new <laughs> signings. The city team, uh, Ryan Pose has been doing this thing again in the in the bargain bin. But these are some solid signings. I'm not I'm not hating any of these. Tavon Young, Ryan Griffin, Ma- uh, Matthew Adams, the cornerback, tight end, and linebacker, all respectively. Which which signing do you guys want to break down first? Oh, let's break out the That's best the, one, I think. The, the young. Tavon Young, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Hey, uh, Tavon Young, man, he's gonna be uh, a great addition. Finally, we got somebody that's gonna be, you know, an integral part of this team. I think um, next year, this coming upcoming season, I think they called him the uh, tight end stopper. Am I correct or no? So, uh, and when I watch his highlights, that guy, he he's a ball hawking. He trying to score every time he get his hands on the ball. Uh, he's around the ball all the time. Uh, we're going to see a lot of them because this is a passing league. We don't see that that Sam like linebacker nowadays, you know, because they can't guard these athletic tight ends that can catch the ball tremendously. So uh, I like this sign. And Tav- Tavon Young, he's going to be terrific. He's Definitely gonna be terrific. like the signing, man. Slot corner. He nickel it. He going to nickel it up, sew it up. It's some stats that I really, really like. The man got two sacks, four tackles for loss, and three QB hits. When I read that from just one season, that means this corner is physical, and he ain't scared to hit no damn body. If you look at the film, man, if you don't cover him when he do that corner blitz, he going to hit somebody. And if you think you're going to uh, leak out as a tight end or a fullback and catch a quick little something off the, the screen or the, uh, go into the flat, you better mm-hmm. get ready to get hit. So I like to sign it. And just a plus, he came from a, a a division with nothing but good defense, and he had to show up. The only thing we had to worry about is that he had some injuries. You know what I'm saying? ACL mm-hmm. and a neck injury. So we just got to look out for that. But overall, good signing. Yes. All right. So he joins now. Our cornerback core is sitting at Jalen Johnson, Thomas Graham Jr., Kendall Velour, and Duke Shelley. Add uh, Tavon Young to that. What do you think our cornerback core is going to do and how they're going to fare in the NFL this year? Actually, um, they should be all right, but I don't think he's done. Uh, yeah. If I can read him, I, I think he's going to go ahead and look for a young talent in the draft with one of those picks. If you leave it as is, I say we okay. But let's let's see if we can get us a, another player in the draft, which I think he's going to do. I mean, I think it's going to be – I think the, the corners will be okay. I think mm-hmm. I would look for him to shore up that defensive backfield. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the back end, the safety, yeah. the safety department. That's what I but I think, think as well. I, yeah, I think that he just uh pose. He just looking at like um we already know Vildor. He better not be damn starting. But <laughs> in the four <laughs> games that Thomas Graham Jr. started last year, he uh-huh. did show some talent, and we was like, damn, where the hell this guy been at? This whole time, like, why has he been on the bench or on the practice squad and not in the game? And in four games. He, he, you know what I'm saying, had a few uh, deflections and made some good plays. So I think that Ryan Pose might be on the cheap on this one. Might be like, yeah, let me see what he can do. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, he's basically given a bunch of one year prove it deals, which I'm yep. not mad at. Again, we know that the maintaining the cap flexibility next season is one of the most important things that this team is trying to do going forward. So I understand that point of it. Um, but another defensive signing that we got, Matthew Adams, linebacker, uh, familiarity with uh, Ibra Flus, uh coming from the court, uh, the uh, the Colts. Any, any anything to be made here? You think this is more of a depth piece? Any maybe a surprising pickup? What are you guys thinking here? I think, as you said, it's a depth pick. You know, just add a little bit uh, depth to the uh, linebacker core. He mm-hmm. has familiar familiarity with uh, Mister Eber Flus. So uh, let's see. You know, he might you know play on special teams or something. We'll see what he what he does. It's not a big splash. Not a big yeah. splash. Yeah. I I think it is. A, you know, what I'm saying just to fill the void in the depth chart. But man, 
This man got a whole highlight reel of his hardest hits. So <laughs> he do. He is no. a hard hitter. I was going to say that. Them hits. <laughs> and he hits hard as, like. He <laughs> hitting people. Give me a depth piece that can hit as hard as him. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm not mad at that. Man, no, he hitting some people. Yeah. And um, just real quick, I think that the players leaving the coach to come play for Eberflus says, says, a, lot. says a lot about Eberflus. Yeah. It says a lot about him. Absolutely. So hopefully we can see some good things and a good uh, – trend of building a, a winning culture around here so yeah especially that they're coming to on on these these shorter deals it's not like the the bears are opening up the bag for them or anything they're coming for reasonable deals and it's it seems like they're coming for the coach and that's always a good fit that is always a good feeling for players who want to play for a coach in this league that says a lot um so i know we got another signing to talk about we got a tight end to talk about but since we just talked about the two defensive signings i want to ask you guys this i know the bears have more things to do in the draft, and I wouldn't be surprised even still on the back end of free agency, they do some things. Um, we still I still am holding out hope that we still end up getting Ogan Joby, but that's that's a story for another day. Man, man. <laughs> Can where we do please? you think where do you think the Bears defense as it as it stands right now, right? When we know there are gonna be some more additions being made, where do you think it's gonna sit next year? We've lost some key defensive pieces in Khalil Mack and others, but what do you think this Bears defense is gonna look like next year? Hmm. You want me to go kick it off? Yeah, go ahead. Kick it I off. I got you. Um, do I think the Chicago Bears will be a top 10 defense? No. But I do think that they'll be in the middle of the pack. But they will have uh, – they will be pretty pretty good. I don't think they're going to be horrible. I think that uh, with the additions that the that the team is adding, like Pose and Iberflus, they're bringing all these players in. And the, the key words that you're constantly hearing from the players that they bring in is tough. Physical, quick, impactful. You, mm. You're constantly reading these different uh, articles and they're mentioning these about the certain players. So will they be top 10? Probably not. But I don't think they're going to be far off from it. And I think that they're going to have a lot to say when it comes to how physical they will play against somebody. I don't think they're going to get pushed around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I look at this defense, I want to take it back to last year with the Colts. They was a tough bend, but don't break defense. You know, that's a cover two, two safeties always back at all times. Looking for turnovers, you know, because, you know, offenses, they don't have the patience to try to drive the ball down the field, 10 plays a drive. So this is going to be similar to those uh, Erlacher Briggs defenses with Lovey Smith, you know, uh, I'm eager to see that. I love those type of defenses. You know what I'm saying? Don't give up points. That's the object of the game. We're we trying to prevent them to score. And most offenses, especially these days, want high points. So they have the patience to go 10, 12 plays on a draft. So I think yeah. they'll be pretty good. Not a top 10, though, but pretty good. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, the next signing that we got to talk about, I've done a little bit more research on since I did that little quick video. Ryan Griffin, uh, the tight end. Now, I had said in my in my solo video, it was probably going to be a death piece. He was going to be there to back up Cole Komet. And all that still remains to be true. But if you look at the number of snaps that he's played in the last few years, he's been getting almost starter level amount of snaps. Yeah. So we may even see him more than what we than what I initially thought. My question to you guys is not only just about the signing of Ryan Griffin, but how much is this? Because we we're all kind of we know that Komet has some potential there. I don't think any of us are quite sold on Komet necessarily being the, the starting uh, tight end for the future, but do you think that this is more than just a depth, depth signing that maybe Ryan Griffin is there for some insurance and if Komet isn't performing, we're going to go to Griffin a little bit more. What do you guys think about that? Absolutely. I agree with that last uh, uh, point there. Uh, I actually think he's better than uh, Cole Komet right now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a solid pass catcher. Uh, he, he, he breaks tackles. He gets to the end zone. He can you know what I'm saying? He catches everything that, uh, that I seen on, on his tape. Uh, Cole Komet has been a disappointment. I ain't going to say he's been a disappointment. He's been less than, less than stellar since mm-hmm. he's been with the bears. So I think he actually could run in and, and top and be a, be above, uh, Cole Komet over that, uh, depth chart. So. Okay. I like this signing, bro. I like I, I like Griffin. I I, yeah. I mean, I liked it on paper, but the more and more that I've researched him, I'm I'm like, you know what? This may be another one of those possible sneaking si- sneaky signings from Ryan Poles. Uh, Bobby, yeah. what you got? I mean, I think the guy's pretty good, and from what I've seen, um, now you're vet. Mm-hmm. I like the pickup because it's a big guy, 6'6", 255 mm-hmm. pounds. Man, that gives Justin Fields another target, and then definitely another target in the red zone, which mm-hmm. the uh. 
I almost said Bulls, which the Bears will <laughs> need. Uh, but um, I think that you bring them in just to add some experience to your tight end group. You still got Cole Komet and Horstead, two relatively young guys, and Cole Komet might have a higher upside, but you still want to, you know, give him somebody who he can lean on, possibly mentor him a little bit, mm -hmm. and then just see what happens. And if, you know, something happens to him or if he's not showing up or, you know what I'm saying, you always got somebody to fall back on with experience and who knows how to get it done. So you just got to wait and see. Can I add something? Uh, he's 6'6", 250, mm -hmm. and he's like Graham from last year, but he can actually run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Graham <laughs> couldn't have run five on, yards, dude. So I like Griffin, man. He might be on top of this depth chart, and, and I'm counting on that because Cole Komet, I don't know. I, I, so, okay, so this is something we've never talked about. Um, so my pops always wanted me to go to Notre Dame, so I have a weakness for Notre Dame players. I'm just going to be real. Go commit. But when you look at it, too, even if Griffin ends up being ahead of the depth chart on Cole commit initially, Griffin could be – he's he's, A, the first Bears signing over the, over the age of 30 that Ryan Poles has signed in this offseason, which to me says there's a lot of trust there, right? But he could be a nice piece – for Cole Komet to learn behind, to practice with. When you look at their, their body type, and they're both 6'6", Komet is a little bit bigger than him at 260, whereas Griffin is 250. But maybe not only is there it's some insurance, maybe it's also somebody who can who may end up starting over Komet. But keep in mind, Komet's 23 years old. Maybe yeah, it's also somebody to come in and kind of mentor Cole Komet in the season that he's here. And, and it may – because they may see something. There, there's enough potential. I I know but, uh, CW almost <laughs> said disappointing. And, you know, I wouldn't even – I wouldn't fight you if you did say that it was disappointing. But sometimes okay. players do need a veteran who is similar to them to help mature them some. And maybe that's what the signing ends up being. And I'm, yeah, and I'm on a on – a just real quick, and I'm on the other side of that. I don't think that uh, – do you have a spectacular year? No. But no. 60 catches for over 600 yards – with the offensive system that didn't even get him involved for relatively the first part of the damn mm -hmm. season due to, look, I don't want to keep talking about this guy, but <laughs> y'all already know why. And they really didn't adjust until the, the later part of the season. So, yeah, what was it spectacular? No, but I definitely just give him a shot because he's still young. You know what I'm saying? And just see what he could do. Definitely put some yeah. pressure on him by getting his signing, though. Put some pressure definitely. on him. Definitely put some pressure on him. Make him stand, uh, stand up and 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 fight to to keep that starting position and earn that starting position. But yeah, yeah, I mean, when you look at Komet, he started all seventeen games last season. He yes. did have over sixty catches for over six hundred yards. Bob, no touchdowns. Which is that's a little problematic for a tight end not to have. Any. Yeah. But, yes. But also, the thing is, how much are we giving them a buck? Because we already said it. They get they get the naggy buffer. So <laughs> some of the time that we got to give some type of credit to the fact. That it was Matt Nagy who was coaching him as well. Definitely. I think a little bit. Okay, but um, I'm but I'm counting on this guy Ryan Griffin to go ahead and lead this tight end group. He definitely has to at his uh, maturity and his veteran veteranship at 12 years. In, what is he? 12 years in the league? Mm -hmm. No, eight, nine, nine years in the league. Nine, nine years, years in the league. Yeah. So yeah, he needs to show these young pups the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you if you look at what a tight end is usually used as that that safety net, that safety valve, that that quick dump off when the play breaks down, you want a vet in there, right? You don't yes. necessarily want you want to be able to bring a vet and somebody who's been doing this for a while. And like I said, with Ryan Griffin getting a, a, a bunch of snaps in the last few years, it kind of makes sense for him to be the signing there. Um, again, yeah. Post just can he's he's staying the course. I'm telling you, yeah. I, I, he's really just staying the course. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait till this draft, man. I'm, right. I'm really for excited real. to see what he does we this draft. Hey, we going we going live, y'all. So yeah. tune in. Tune in. Tune, tune in. in. We will be live for the first pick. <laughs> <laughs> one of the last questions we got uh, before we leave, one of the last topics I should say that we have, Phillip Rivers, surprisingly enough, mentoring Justin Fields. Now, I will say this. I, some people are going to hear that, and you're going to get some people who react to that and say, what does Phillip Rivers really did? But some people forget, Phillip R Rivers had a hell of a career. Yeah. A hell of a career. And it's, yeah. if it wasn't for him playing at a time where Breeze, Roethlisberger, and Peyton Manning were all and Rodgers were all doing their thing, I think people would understand that Rivers not only probably would have a ring, but he would he would 
be held a little bit higher than what I think people have regard. And yeah, he was crazy. He did some shit that wasn't becoming becoming <laughs> of quarterbacks to the old heads, but I don't care about that. I want to see my quarterback have a little bit of edge. So I like Phillip Rivers. What I do you guys him. think about Phillip Rivers and him him helping mentor Justin Fields? Oh, I mean, he's one of the best places you can go to to help a young quarterback when you're trying to grow in this league. Did you know that Phillip Rivers is sixth in touchdown passes and sixth in, in yards passed in NFL history? Come on, guys. He's one of the greatest court quarterbacks ever in the NFL. I'm not going to put a number like one through 25, but he just one of the greatest that, ever. Once you put a number on it, people start. It, yeah. You know, yeah. Play, so I feel you on that. Come on yeah, now. Who there. you think, who you think was throwing those passes to Antonio Gates and LaDainian Thomason? Who you think that was? That was Phillip, dude. Come on now. And it's going to be great for the young kid, Justin Fields, learning from a veteran who knows all the plays he knows all he just knows everything that is to do about uh quarterback and except running he he ain't run nowhere no you know, <laughs> luckily, you know? Luckily, though, justin fields doesn't need help with the running thing right yeah because you he know he's be a smarter in the pa in the pocket quarterback he yeah. knows how to run if the play breaks down i trust justin fields to, yes. he needs to slide a little bit better because some of those some of those hits he needs to learn to slide yeah. a little bit better yes. but with that mm -hmm. being said like what we need fields to mature on and work on Philip Rivers can absolutely help mentor him to that. But go ahead, Bobby. Definitely. Um, I think it's great that he got Philip Rivers to help him out because yeah. everybody knows that the play doesn't start when the quarterback hikes the ball. It Once the linemen line up, that's when the play starts. It mm -hmm. actually starts at the moment that you break the huddle. So when those guys, get, when he walks up and they trying to disguise something because the opposing uh, defensive coordinator, like, I don't believe it. He got to use the knowledge that he got from Phillip Rivers to be like, all right, I'm going to call the motion. If the linebacker follow him or pass him on over, it's either going to be a man or they're going to run his own. They're going to do that. So, and just reading from the thing, uh, the article, they basically said um, everyone has a job before the ball is hiked. So, you mm -hmm. got to be able to figure out different things to see what coverage that that defense will be in that will at least help you. You know what I'm saying? Once once you do have to get rid of that ball. So I think it's pretty damn good. Could you find a better pocket passer than Phil? I mean, there's there's more better, you know, better yeah. quarterbacks ever in this league. But he's a perfect pocket passer, dude. Just a perfect. He didn't have a monster arm. You know what I'm saying? But he was accurate. And he did his thing, man. So this is great for Justin Fields. I can't wait to see the uh, outcome of his uh, mentorship to our young kid out there on the field. Can't hey, wait man. to see it. Do you think this develops to an official job for Phillip Rivers? I think so. I think so. I think the so. Way I, the way that I read the article, the way that it seems like the relationship him and Eberflus has is like, I can fully expect Eberflus to give him some type of assistant role or something where we see him in an official capacity outside of just this mentor. I would love to see that from Phillip Rivers. Go Man, ahead, he's, a, to say. he's a, he's a, a um, head coach for a high school football team. So he has some experience. And let me tell y'all, if Josh McCown can go in and be a damn assistant, <laughs> Philip Rivers can be a damn assistant. Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. He was about to get a damn head coaching job. <laughs> you lie, no way. The Texans was about to give Josh McCown a, a, a head coaching job yeah. before Brian Flores put the league on blast. But that's another. That's a story for another day. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> oh man, that's wild. But yeah, man, I, I Philip Rivers is an a all time great quarterback, and if he's mentoring Justin Fields, hats off to him. I'm so glad that they went to him instead of Jay Cutler. But I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, drop, that. I'm gonna drop that right there. Yes, sir. Oh, oh man, man. We I love about... Jay though, man. I love I know, Jay. Don't get me wrong. I love and the like I said, and I tell people so much. It's it's crazy that Jay Cutler looks more healthy now than what he did when he was playing. <laughs> Crazy, we stre right? we stressed him out, fam. Like, yeah. yes, he, he looks so much younger than what he did his last couple of years here in Chicago, <laughs> fam. Like, that's like when you see people when they get out of a bad relationship and they depressed at first, but then uh, about a year later you see them and they they healthy. They didn't lost a ton of weight. 
they yes, walk around with it. they dressing better. Like that's what just <laughs> Yeah, that's what happened to Cutler. He literally got out and got into like for real though. It's crazy. Hey, that, hey, he got knocked on his ass so much time. I can understand. Oh, <laughs> I, I know, can man. understand, bro. The fact that he made it out without CTE is, is yes. Crazy, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> for real, bro. Oh man, but all right, y'all. Anything left before we head out for the day? No, nah, we yeah, straight. Yeah. No, nah, we straight, guys. Just make sure y'all tune in to Chicago Bears Bear Central, baby. We just warming up. We coming, baby. You know that yeah. that draft on the way. Draft yeah. on the way. I can't yeah. wait to listen. I, this is the most excited I've been for NFL draft in a minute, oh. man. I'm oh, so this is, excited for this draft. This is going to tell us a lot about this team. I'm hoping it does. This is going to tell us a lot about this team. Yes, yeah, to me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, draft starts April 28th. Uh, and goes to April 30th. And, hey, man, we're going to be there to break down at least their second-round picks, if nothing else. I can't wait to see what the Bears do. Man. And if they, make, if they make a trade to move up to get somebody that we all want them to get, y'all going to see me lose my shit. Live <laughs> live. That's what you're get your drinks ready, come yeah, again. <laughs> I can't wait, fam. I cannot wait. I'm I'm I'm, ta- I'm taking off work that day. I didn't even tell y'all. Yet. I'm taking <laughs> off work. That day. You taking off work? Watch the draft, the food. I don't want no interruptions, man. So, I might have to do something. I might have to pull something out. <laughs> Let's see what I got. I got some sick days or something. <laughs> I am so excited. I am so excited for this draft, fam. I don't I don't know what to say, but uh, yeah, man, that's it for Chicago Bears Central this week. Go ahead and give me your social media, fellas. Let's get up out of here. Go ahead and check out the gang at Chicago Bull Show with the Cone. Yak Boys on all social media platforms. And once you go ahead and hit us up, hit up my man Hayes at CEO Hayes. Y'all go already know. Let's get it. Yeah, absolutely. You can follow us collectively at Shy Bear Central. Uh, make sure if you're seeing this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, help us continue to grow. We know we started this podcast. Like I said, it was like f- we had like five months until the season started when we started this show. But you know what? We've been gearing up and uh the draft is going to be one of the, the biggest things we do, and I can't wait for it. Yes, yes sir. sir. But that's it, man. Thank you for joining us on another episode. We out this mug. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break.